wherever you may happen to be, and welcome to episode 90. That means we're 10 away from the big century. Episode 90 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, coming to you as always now live on YouTube. And we've got another live interview today. And, and obviously those of you who've tuned in know exactly who the subject of today's interview is. You'll get to see him in a moment. A very, very brief introduction. My guest today uh, is one of the co-founders of a relatively new brand, but a brand that um, has made quite a splash in the independent perfume scene, even though they haven't been around for a very long time. The brand in question, as you know, is Parlement de Parfum. Um, we'll talk about how it, it started. We'll talk about what led to its creation in a moment with one of its co-founders. But I guess one of the many things that makes it special is that one of the creative forces behind it is a, a, what we can safely call a, a truly legendary perfumer. We haven't got him today, but I'm, I'm sure you won't be disappointed when you do find out who we have got. The legendary perfumer in question is Michel Almarac. I don't need to tell you all of the perfumes he's made. I'm sure that may come up in today's discussion. You can look him up yourselves. But I think that the main thing I could say to give you an idea of this man's standing in the perfume community is that a few years ago when I interviewed um, Frederick Mal and I asked him which perfumers that he hasn't worked with, he would most like to have worked with, he thought about it just for two seconds and he immediately said Michel Almarac, that he would have really liked to have had an opportunity to work with Michel Almarac. And th that really, really tells you the respect that he has, the successes that he's achieved, his standing in the industry. Who we have got today is his son, who is one of the co-founders of this brand, Parlement de Parfum. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the Persilaise channel today, Benjamin Almarac. Thank you very much for joining us on the Persilaise YouTube channel. Thank you, Darius. I'm very happy to be there. Um, obviously from uh, uh, Paris, uh, sunny today. So it's great that life is coming uh, again to us. So that's uh, pretty good news. Right now, I, I was actually going to ask you about how things are in Paris. I'm guessing that you've you've you're you're sort of home now after a day at the boutique. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So life uh, started again uh, last Monday. So it's been uh, um, eight days. Uh, it's actually it's quite interesting because you discover uh, a different city. I mean, we've discovered two different cities since the beginning. Uh, first, the lockdown, <clears throat> the lockdown city. Uh, so you got the city for you uh, with no traffic, with nobody. Uh, and when you've got a reason to go to work, so you're able, uh, you're free to move outside, and you see something that you've never, you've never saw before. Uh, it's like uh, living in that kind of uh, dramatic uh, end of the world movies. You see, so when you've got a virus that has killed everybody, so it's quite like this. You feel it's it's quite trend. So you feel like uh, Bruce Willis or, or Will Smith um, with the muscle, uh, less muscle, uh, obviously. Uh, and then right now you've got a city with only uh, Parisian. Uh, so it's Are not better not work. Sorry, no tourists. Absolutely, no tourists. So uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's it's interesting because you discover things differently uh, clearly. So so it's it's not a happy well, situation, but it's good to live. This 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 how how lockdown may have affected things. And um, your boutique has been closed, but I'd imagine that you've still been open online. Have you found during this lockdown period that maybe? Um, people's tastes in what they've been buying have changed? Have some perfumes which used to sell really well gone down in sales and maybe some perfumes that weren't selling so well gone up in sales? Have you, have you noticed anything like that? Um, uh, actually, the, the, the main thing I've noticed is that um, we don't have like a few stars in the collection. Uh, I'm clearly not able to say uh, which one is the star, which one is the second star and which one is the the, the, the bad students, uh, I don't know how to say exactly in English, but the That's idea fine. is here. Um, uh, we have a collection uh, now that is composed of uh, 14 uh, perfumes, um, but of course two are very new, so let's say uh, 12. And among the, the 12 perfume, I mean, the, the orders are quite equal. Uh, among every reference. So that's very interesting because I think it's quite unique uh, in a, a, a perfume house uh, business model. Uh, usually you always know that you will have one, two or three stars and then the rest is here. You don't know really why, but you've got three stars that just hang you uh, and, and make you moving forward. For us, they it's a carry the whole brand. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't have that so much. Okay. No, clearly no. Um, 
Um, I can see lots and lots of comments. Obviously, you know I am uh, paying attention to all of your comments and seeing all of your comments. Just, just so that you're aware, Benjamin, we've got people saying hello from Texas, from Puerto Rico, from Spain, from London, from Manchester. We've got a bonjour from Paris. We've got Croatia. Um, so, so, so truly the whole world is being represented at the moment. Obviously, 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 uh, in a few minutes, we will start taking your questions for Benjamin. But like I've said in some of these interviews before, don't send your questions in now, because if you send them now, then I may miss them later on. So hang on to them for the moment, and then I'll tell you when it's okay to start sending them. So, um, like I said, this is a brand that, you know, uh, in, 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 in the sort of big picture, it isn't, it's not a very old brand. You're, you're only about four years old. So you launched in 2016, so I'm guessing that it must have been about 2015 that you started thinking about the creation of the brand. In 2015, I would imagine that lots and lots of people must have said to you, you are crazy to be thinking about starting a new perfume brand now. Is that true? Um, not really. Uh, well, not really okay. because, uh, you know, because if you, I, I was not working um, in the industry before. So, I mean, I, I uh, obviously knew nobody uh, in the industry. Uh, only my father, as a nose, and my brother as a, a salesperson in the industry. So okay, everybody was like, "Okay, you're right there." You're, you're you say you know only your father. Your father was quite a good connection to have in the industry, though, wasn't he? Yes, it's a good connection, but it is very interesting to see that um, actually they know nothing about uh, the industry. Clearly, okay. they know, and 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 that's even more interesting because what they know is what perfume are successes uh, and they they how to say they they understand how a perfume is a success depending on the quantity they sell and the quantity i mean in terms of kilograms or in terms of tons of perfume so really the perfume not the alcohol etc only the perfume um and when you hear them you hear that most of the time, the big successes, the, the biggest successes are the perfume you won't even notice. For example? Or, for example, I don't know, like, uh, for example, the, all the, the perfume brands uh, uh, that are de dedicated to uh, a car manufacturer, you think, okay, that's great. So Jaguar has some perfume, uh, Bentley has some perfume, but well, uh, they, are not, uh, they are not perfume manufacturer actually. They are amongst the biggest uh, volumes uh, in terms of sales uh, per year, um, and you've got also a lot of different, a lot of other things. So, for example, all the perfume my father created in the eighties uh, or in the nineties, things that you don't even know, or maybe just the fragrance community knows, but after the rest of the world doesn't know this. So, perfume like uh, Kiton, uh, Kiton yeah. for men, or a Sculpture by Nikos, uh, or Minotaur by Paloma Picasso they are still huge they are still huge and you're like where can we find this perfume uh, but actually you can find them so have i understood you correctly that what you're saying is that okay your your dad obviously was in the industry but he was all he was almost like in his own little bubble and so he couldn't help you with things like creating a brand starting a brand is that what you mean yeah absolutely absolutely i really his, his knowledge is only about sense that's all Okay, so whose idea was it to create the brand? How did it all come to life? Uh, it, it was kind of a, a family uh, idea to create a brand, uh, to create a, a place where my father would be able to create 100% freely, so with no restriction. So it's really giving him the opportunity of making what he wants to do, creating what he wants to create, Without anybody saying him, telling him, okay, no, we don't think it will work because for this or because for this or because for this. So he is like only a nose that is making perfume for himself. We don't pay attention to other brands. We don't pay attention to the market. We only pay attention to what Michel would like to launch next. And had he been feeling uh, frustrated, would you say? Was there a sense where he was feeling that he couldn't actually make the sorts of things he wanted to make did, did he want to break away from all of that yeah i, I think that's that's a, a, a big input in the in the brand is to say okay he's not able to to launch and to create what he really wants to launch uh 
I mean, he's only one perfumer amongst a big community of perfumer working for a company that is huge. It's called Roberte. Uh, they are worldwide leader in natural raw materials, but they are still quite small compared to the very big ones like Gibaudan, Firmnich, IFF. So, I mean, what I want to say is that you don't have enough brands in the market, enough big brands in the market to, to how to say, to satisfy uh, all the desires of perfumers. So, how do you start a perfume brand? Um, I'm, I think you have plenty of different ways uh, to create a perfume brand. How did you uh, start how, yeah. um, how did we do? Um, we first uh, studied perfumes, uh, and maybe that's a mistake, but we, we were very, how to say, uh, uh, keen on uh, choosing the perfume. I mean, it's the most interesting part, is choosing the perfume. But after I realized that you need to dress your perfume, you need to find a name for the brand, you need to find a story for the brand, you need to find what will make you different from others, um, you need to find stories uh, for your perfumes, um, and also you need to find the way to produce them, and you need to find a way to sell them. <laughs> and who, who, came, and who came up with the name? Who came up with Parlement de Parfum? It's Michel. It's Michel. Uh, I, I wanted something different, so not like Maison Michel Almerac. I think we've got enough of this uh, in the industry. Um, and I wanted something different from the beginning till the end. So that's why we try to make every step different, starting from the name, then with the packaging, uh, then with uh, our way uh, of explaining our perfume. I mean, we don't put like uh, 12 ingredients in our olfactive pyramid. We only say that it's an accord of three or four or five maximum of ingredients. Uh, because clearly we still don't understand how normal people, I mean, people that are not very involved in perfume, how they can understand uh, an olfactive pyramid with 12 ingredients. I mean, it's, it's impossible. So with a, with a name like Parlement de Parfum, was the idea that perfume is a conversation? Yeah, I think perfume should be, uh, in our project, perfume should be a conversation. Um, respecting the project of, um, respecting the project of uh, telling the truth to people, being honest about perfume. So what is perfume? Uh, how do you collect the ingredients? Are they fully natural uh, i mean the the full natural is clearly very trendy right now uh, i'm very curious about how do they do to get a uh, 100 uh, natural perfume and which um, rules do they follow is it like 100 natural natural or is it 100 of things that you can find naturally but uh, actually that you cannot extract like a lily of the valley or a lily or lilac you see what i mean so mm. um it's really about telling the truth and about and for telling to tell the truth you need to talk about perfume and explain to people what is perfume now one thing that was also a little bit unusual about your brand correct me if i'm wrong is that when you launched you actually launched with a boutique is that right yeah absolutely i mean the boutique is really part of the the concept uh to talk about perfume you need to let people know how do you make a perfume and so our boutique is a, is a lab, a real lab, how you can find it in uh, uh, Roberté or uh, Givaudan or IFF, uh, no matter. Um, so lab is a very clean space with a scale and raw materials. So that's the, the, the spirit of our boutique and the philosophy of our boutique is that you enter inside a lab and then you got somebody that is supposed to be a specialist. So that's why we try to have a, uh, people in our store that are very knowledgeable uh, about perfume and they can explain everything. So is it natural, synthetic, uh, which, uh, uh, where does it come from? And it's quite difficult to know everything, actually. So it was, it was quite a risk, wasn't it, to start off with as many perfumes as you did and with a boutique. That was quite a substantial investment, I guess. Yeah, it's a substantial uh, investment. It's a, it's a huge uh, amount of work that you should do. But it's also a great possibility to explain yourself. Uh, with a boutique, you can let know people your philosophy. Whereas that in, in a department store, I mean, the judgment is, is, is not uh, objective. Somebody once told me that if you set up a brand and your plan is to one day be bought up by a big brand, like for LVMH to buy you or L'Oreal to buy you or somebody, then you should have a boutique. I think that's very true. 
uh, I think that's very true. If we if we if we check at the all the the last uh, uh, purchased, uh, like as you said, Le Labo, Frédéric Mal, Kilian, all that kind of things, they had their own boutique. But more than a boutique, they have a strong uh, they have a strong identity, and a strong identity usually uh, come from a boutique. I mean, maybe the only counter example is uh, Byredo. Byredo is, is a brand that that lives perfectly without the boutique. Uh, and even in, when you go to their boutique, I mean, there is a, a strong philosophy of uh, something clean, very trendy. But I mean, you, you don't have like the, the, the feeling you have when you enter inside a, a, a shop of Le Labo. When you enter inside Le Labo, you know you are in Le Labo. When you enter inside Kilian, you know you, you, you've got to have a, a big cigar and, and a gold uh, lighter. You see what I mean? So yeah. that's clearly, I think, an important uh, thing to have. Okay, cool. Right, now, with a personalized interview, there's always got to be at least a little bit of an element of a, of a game. So this is, this is actually a game that I haven't played with uh, somebody that I've interviewed for a very long time. It's something that I used to do on the blog called uh, 20 Blotters, okay? Um, these, are, these are supposed to be questions that you just answer like really, really quickly. But of course, I can't actually give you these cards. So you mm -hmm. have to trust me that I'm reading the questions correctly. Here mm -hmm. you've got the uh, cards numbered one to nine. Can you just choose five numbers for me and I take, I'll take those cards out? Okay, so let's say uh, number two, uh, number eight, uh, number five, uh, mm number one because it's always a goal to be number one and uh, i don't know last one number nine okay so these are th so these are questions about which you're not supposed to think too hard okay so just say what's the first thing that came to your mind mm -hmm. um who who were your role models when you were growing up who were your role models when you were growing up my what your role models the people that you look up looked up to the people that you wanted to be like that you wanted to copy when you grow up uh honestly my father Okay, um, next one. What was the first perfume you ever bought for somebody else? <laughs> Nothing. You've never, never bought, bought a perfume for somebody I've else? I've never bought any perfume, I mean, no. I don't have to bought any perfume. But is that because in your family there was always plenty of perfume, you didn't have to? Uh, absolutely, I've got so many stuff, so I, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Next one, at what age did you realize that you would enter the perfume industry? Um, I would say uh, 19. As young as that? Yeah, 19 when uh, entering at uh, university. So you knew then that you wanted to go into the industry? Yeah, because at university you always have like a lot of, you know, long-term projects and you've got to find something. And I mean, it's easy to, to, to start in the industry where your father is working because you will have plenty of information very easily. Uh, okay. So I would say it's maybe like a, uh, the the process of a bad student to say, okay, this will be easy, so I will go this way. But after, when you enter inside, you say, oh, there is something interesting inside. Okay. What was the first advertising campaign you can remember, either for a perfume or anything? What's the first advertising campaign that made an impact on you when you were younger? <sighs> That's very, I would say maybe, uh, I would say Chloe, because I was very linked to the project as Michel created the Chloe. and. Uh, I remember having like a, a very big image in my uh, bedroom of a Chloe campaign with one of the three ladies that you had in 2008. I was like 17. And of course, at, at this age, you like to have like nice ladies in your bedroom. So maybe that's what I remember. So you took the one for whom your father made the perfume. If, if, you, if you could go back in time and meet your younger self, what advice would you give him? Um, I would say don't don't trust uh, your uh, teachers uh, at school. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to ask you for more. Right, next set of questions. Now you need to give me five numbers from one to ten. Okay, so let's say the the other one. So uh, three, four, uh, six, seven, and ten. Okay, here. You've got to you've got to complete the sentences, okay? I'm going to give you the start of a sentence. You have to complete the sentence. When I walk into the perfume section of a department store, I feel uh, I feel I need to leave this place. Okay. I wish we could bottle the smell of of um, of 
a T-bone uh, burning uh, on the barbecue. Oh, like a T-bone steak? Absolutely. <laughs> um, if only people who buy perfume would, what? Sorry, if only perfume. Uh, you could say, I wish people who buy perfume would. Uh, would uh, never pay attention to speeches, uh, to uh, packaging, uh, and to uh, uh, this perfume is the strongest one you will ever find in the industry. Okay, we could talk about strong perfumes in a minute, though. I've got one of them here. Um, the perfume world has lost what? Uh, has lost uh, transparency and honesty. Okay. Without perfume, my life what? Uh, my life would be uh, more peaceful. <laughs> okay. You asked for it, though, didn't you? Okay, now give me five numbers from 1 to 12. From 1 to 12. Okay, so let's take the two new ones, 11 and 12. And then uh, the special one, so nine, uh, two, uh, and eight. Okay. Now these are these are super quick. I'm going to give you. I'm going to say two things, and then you have to say which of these two you prefer. Do you prefer the past or the future? Uh, the future. Okay. Oh, this is London or Paris. <laughs> Paris. I sell more. Okay. The big picture or the details. Uh, the details. You are the details guy, are you? Yeah. Is is your father more of the big picture guy or your brother? Absolutely, or? absolutely. Michel is the big picture guy. Okay. Tradition or innovation? Uh, 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 a mix. Oh, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> Abstract or concrete? Concrete. Okay. And then the last set. Uh, give me five numbers again from one to ten. So, uh, okay, uh, without thinking, three, four, five, uh, eight, nine. Cool. Okay, these are all questions which are supposed to make you think ahead to focus on the future. So, what is the best thing that the internet has done for the perfume industry? Mm, making uh, your perfume uh, available from the other, the other side of the planet, uh, even if you don't have any store there. Okay. Does the term niche perfumery have any meaning? I don't think so. OK. What is the worst thing the internet has done for the perfume industry? Um, I've interviewing you on YouTube. <laughs> so. uh, I, would, I, I would say, um, I would say um, making everybody uh, able to say everything and anything and people can hear it, and you don't even know if there is, if it's a true or a lie. Okay. Or false information more than lie, false information. Are IFRA and uh, regulations harming perfumery? Um, I think yes and no, because you need some rules. Uh, you need some rules, uh, and I'm quite sure some rules are good for our uh, youth. But uh, sometimes the rules are too hard. Uh, and also, I think it's really a pity that some brands, depending on where they are based, they should follow IFRA. Uh, and other brands, uh, if they are uh, in other countries, uh, they don't have to follow IFRA. That's so we are, not, we are not playing on the same level. And your last question from this game, does perfume have the power to change the world? <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Uh, I don't think so. I would love to, but I don't think so. That's cool. You, you've passed the test. You've passed the game. You're well done. You've done the, you've done the 20 blotters. The, the first person to do 20 blotters live. Very, very brave. Okay. Um, just a reminder, folks, you're watching episode 90 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolais. We have got the presence of uh, Benjamin Almarac, co-founder of Parlement de Parfum, who's very kindly given up uh, some of his time from Paris to join us today. I will we'll be going to your questions in a few minutes, so start thinking of some questions to ask him about his brand. We should smell some of these perfumes, but I also would like to spend just a few minutes talking to you about something that fascinates me about brands that... Uh, you know, have a very, very strong family connection. And of course, the relationship between fathers and sons is always so interesting. I'm really, really fascinated. Who is the boss? Who's the boss at Par Parlement de Parfum? Um, oh, really, it, it, it's me. It's my, it's my everyday job. Uh, Michel now is old, so he's almost retired. 
Um, he only creates for me and for his uh, his best clients or the one he likes. But no, he's clearly just here for the sense and to support me. But he's not deciding anything else. So, so do you go to him and say, no, 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 this perfume is not finished. Go away and do this, this, and this. No, no, no. For perfume, he has uh, he has the control. Uh, so I trust him hundred percent, and and it will be uh, arrogant uh, for me to tell him, okay, not this or not this. He knows. Um, after I can tell him, okay, I don't want this because I feel we already have something like this. I mean, uh, Michel has a vocabulary, a vocabulary that is so large that he think that this. And these are different, whereas for you it's the same. You see what I mean? So we say no, no, no. It's absolutely different from something from something we already have. I say okay, I trust you, but for everybody, it's almost the same. So you mean he's very, very sensitive to small differences? Absolutely. Okay, but has absolutely. there been a situation where maybe you haven't been so confident about one of your perfumes, but you've gone ahead and you've released it because because he said it's finished? Uh, no, most of them we highly trust the perfumes. We highly trust it because I highly trust uh, the the skill uh, of Michel. Um, after I, uh, of course, I know that some of them will not be big sales uh, because um, they are very tricky. Um, they are only for a small part, a small share of people that may like this. But all of them are very interesting, and 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 they all have their place in the collection. What What do you think is one of your more tricky ones? Uh, Game of the Noel. Oh, OK. Yeah, Game of the Noel because of the name. Because of the name, because uh, clearly that's a, that's a good example how uh, how that people are paying too much attention to everything else than except the scents. I mean, really, I think the best would be to, uh, to smell like, uh, how to say, uh, we're, we're, we're blended, uh, no, uh, blind. It would yeah. be like to, to, to smell blind uh, because when you see something that can put you on a wrong uh, path, uh, on the wrong way, that, that, that that's a pity, clearly. So Game of the Run, it's, it's complicated to, to, to manage. Um, um, I wanted to talk about one of these perfumes that you've got here because now I haven't smelt your latest release, which is called uh, Mile High, because I believe that's still an exclusive to Lucky Scent and is obviously available through your site as well. Am I right that it's still basically an exclusive Ab to Lucky Scent? Absolutely. It's an exclusive to Lucky Scent that has been a, our very first partner, the very first boutique to trust us. And I think when you're creating your own company, uh, the first one to trust you, it's, uh, uh, it means a lot. I mean, it, it has no value. It, it's amazing. So when, they have, when they've asked me for an exclusive, uh, I said, uh, of course, um, it will be a big pleasure to make something for you. But one of the more sort of recent ones that I have tried is is this one, Saffron Wood, Saffron Wood 91. Yeah. And I'm almost scared to spray it because I remember when I first when I first sprayed it, and I think I may have done it actually live in a video. When I first sprayed it and I saw the release, and I think it said something about how this is the most one of the most powerful perfumes we have ever created. And I remember smelling it and thinking, oh, I, don't, I don't know what they're talking about. It's the and then this stuff never ever vanished it, it it just sort of stayed on the blotter and on me for ages and ages and ages i'm sure that i could still smell it or i was sure even on my clothes after i'd washed my clothes so how, how did this come about and why did you decide to go with something that is i am going to spray some why did you decide to go with something that is so insanely long lasting um honestly uh, i think the main reason is london uh, and 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 more than London, the main reason is uh, is uh, is uh, the, the 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 main store where we are in London in Selfridges. Um, and I was like, okay, uh, Benjamin, your perfume are not strong enough for Selfridges. They are not strong enough for Selfridges. I was like, okay, come on. How can people in Paris tell me that my perfume are sometimes too strong for them? Uh, they are just like normal customer. I mean, they they are not involved in the, in the blogosphere of perfume, so they just want a perfume that suits them. And they say, okay, oof, this one will be too strong for me. And in Selfridges, they say, no, it's not enough strong, not strong enough, etc. Go stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, your father has made strongest perfume by the past, but uh, with your perfume, we feel I was like that's absolutely uh, false. I mean, my father never changed his way of creating. Uh, he knows how to make strong perfume. But more than strong perfume, he knows how to make 
interesting perfume uh, or honest perfume, perfume that will be at their own strength and power, but that will stay for a day. And I think that's what we should ask the perfume is to be there for the day, not more. I mean, we all shower, or I hope we all shower, especially during these, uh, these complicated times. So I said, okay, you want a, strong, a stronger perfume? We'll make a stronger perfume. Uh, and we'll make one that never ends. So that's how they suffer with it. So what makes it so long lasting? First quality uh, of the ingredients. Second, uh, the ingredients themselves, uh, uh, mostly saffron, uh, cedar wood, birch, uh, and rose. Uh, third, um, of course, the concentration, but I mean, even if you put this perfume is at 20%, even if you put it at 12, 12%, it will be almost the same. Uh, I would say maybe third, uh, the, the balance of the formula uh, is great to put good quality ingredients inside, but if you don't know how to balance them, uh, and that's the job of Michel, uh, and that's uh, where he's quite good, uh, I think that's all. And, and you know, you're saying the, 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 these clientele in Selfridges, usually when people say that, what they actually mean is customers from the Middle East, from that part of the world, because that is a very, very significant portion of, of um, the clientele of, of Selfridges. How, how many countries are you available in now around the world? Um, just to add something about Selfridges, uh, I, I, of yeah. course, I love I, I love this store, and, and, and Great Britain is a great partner for us, and especially uh, our... Uh, Distributor there at the Orange Square and and uh, their their uh, PR responsible person uh, Helen, uh, they are all making a great job. I think it's not a problem of Selfridges or anything. It's just that in Selfridges you've got so many perfumes, so many people, so many sprays everywhere. How do you want to smell everything? I mean, it, it, the success of Selfridges make that you need, of course, to have strong perfume. It's like a Sephora. When you enter inside a Sephora, how do you want to taste any, every, anything? Because it's so strong inside. So that's why we need to have stronger stuff. And that's also very good because then it forces us to develop stronger perfume, stronger perfume. And how, how many countries are you available in around the world? Do you know? Uh, I would say like maybe a, a dozen uh, of country. Yeah, a dozen uh, of country. Because I know that you're available in Japan. Yeah. How, how yeah. have you been received in Japan? Uh, we've been very well received. Uh, um, Japan is it, it, it's fantastic. It's still my my, my best uh, trip uh, ever. Um, that's funny how a so small country can uh, make you traveling very very far away. Um, uh, and Japan, um, I think we've been well received because the signature is delicate and the signature of Parlant Parfum. Uh, is made to be delicate, uh, and I think they really like uh, delicate uh, perfume. Um, of course, because Michelle has created Chloe, uh, and Chloe, I think it's the biggest success ever in Japan. Of course, it helped us to develop in, in Japan, uh, but maybe it's his way of creating uh, that has made the brand successful in Japan. Uh, previously, we've I've talked about a perfume called Sculpture uh, for Nikos, and Sculpture for Nikos is a perfume that has been sold in Japan for maybe 30 years. Uh, and even if nobody knows this brand, and even if there are there is no advertising, no advertisement about this perfume, Sculpture by Nikos is still a big success there. So maybe that's why Parma Parfum is welcome there. Which of your perfumes has turned out to be the most successful in Japan? I think it's uh, as everywhere in the world. Uh, we don't have any stars. Uh, of course, it's not exactly the same. Um, of course, the best-selling one in the UK with uh, uh, the Middle East clientele are other scents than in Japan. But after you don't have any star there. Of course, the rose, uh, the perfume called Une Tonne de Rose, uh, is a, is a very uh, nicely sold there. A perfume called Totally White, very clean, smells like a, a nature, a spring. Uh, uh, garden, a fresh bouquet of white flowers, a clean baby, uh, the Neroli one, Tomboy Neroli, which is very fresh and citrusy, but quite modern. But even like the stronger perfume of our collection, they are obviously welcome there. Like and the vanilla, uh, for example. Which of your perfumes is, do you think, the most misunderstood? Um, 
on the the blog the blogosphere on Instagram, I think the most misunderstood one is uh, your favorite, uh, Papyrus Oud. Uh, really? Yeah, I've been reading so many comments about this perfume. Uh, about we're all the story now. We're going to spray this one now. <laughs> about Go all on. the story of Papyrus Oud, about uh, Gucci pour Homme, about Bentley Absolute, and about Papyrus Oud. Uh, I think it's a good occasion. Our live is a good occasion to say that uh, Gucci pour Homme, uh, is absolutely uh, the same than Bentley Absolute, or more is more like Bentley Absolute is absolutely the same of Gucci pour Homme. It's absolutely the same. I I I, I, all, I asked Michel like uh, four days ago. Um, what are the differences between Gucci Purim and Bentley Absolute? He told me nothing. There is no difference. And I'm quite surprised when I I see on Instagram, but things that are very like, uh, um, how to say, you feel like it's, it's a big truth. So yes, uh, Bentley Absolute was not the same as Gucci Purim. Absolutely, it's, it's the same. Um, uh, and do, I don't... Do, you mean, do you mean that people are saying that they see all of these differences in them, whereas actually there are no differences at all? Absolutely, there are no differences at all, and people are saying that there is a, there are differences. But I mean, I'm, I'm not blaming them. It's just to say that the power of a brand, Gucci, and the power of a trend is so huge that it affects your it, perception. It affects you, you, even if you think, no, no, I'm 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 not uh, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. Uh, I mean, it, this doesn't affect me. It affects everybody. Um, for people saying that. All people saying that Gucci Porum was better than Bentley Absolute, it means that the power of Gucci and the power of this success of Gucci Porum uh, is so huge that they still think it's better than Bentley Absolute. That's because fascinating. It's the same. Okay, folks, send in your questions now and we'll start taking some questions for Benjamin. But I have to ask you as well, going back to this theme of uh, working with your dad, how often do you argue about the work? You mean? How often do you fight? How often do you have a disagreement? Um, with Michel, never. With, Seriously? With, yeah, yeah, with Michel, never. No, no, really, he's a big support. Uh, uh, he's a big support and, he, and he, he's, he's, yeah, he's a big support because he, he never says, oh, maybe you're, you're making a false, uh, you're, you're, going, you're going inside of uh, the bad way. Uh, so no, that that's great. And uh, every time I ask him to travel with me, uh, he comes. Uh, so um, he came with me to Russia uh, with uh, uh, how to say um, uh, a stop uh, in Germany. You know, by the plane. He hates plane, uh, but he did the trip for me. So he's really like a huge support. Really. We were, were supposed were to go always... to Japan in April, but unfortunately, everything was cancelled. Right. Were you always close to each other when you were growing up? When you were younger, yeah. yeah, 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 kind of. Okay, so it's a relationship that works. Okay, we've got some questions coming. Let's take this first question. It's appropriate, I suppose, that we take a question from somebody who is in Paris. This is a question from Chang, who says, "Can you talk a little bit about Oris Tattoo? I find it very, very intriguing." I'll spray a little bit now from the discovery set. Tell us a little bit about Oris Tattoo. How did that come about? So, um, I will tell you the how to say i don't know how to say you know uh, the science of saying who is the father of who and the grandparents and the grandparents etc you know when you got like uh, the tree family. absolutely i'll tell you like, the family tree of this perfume uh, the very first perfume in this idea uh, is called uh gray flanel by jeff Rabin. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the very first perfume uh, in this idea and when michel was uh, still a, a student uh, in uh, in uh, rue patron du pont in grasse uh, so let's say maybe in 72 or 73, uh, their boss was uh, like, uh, he had like a, a strong uh, personality. And, and he said, okay, you're all like uh, uh, newbies. You're, you don't know how to make good perfume. So uh, copy me gray flannel. Uh, and from this exercise of copying gray flannel, you have so many uh, best sellers in the industry, uh, starting from uh, Fahrenheit first. Which is coming from Grefanel, which so violet, is, green note, yeah, absolutely. It it's it's linked. Let's say it's the son of Grefanel. The son of Grefanel is uh, Fahrenheit, but Fahrenheit has also a brother, uh, which is called uh, uh, Cool Water, uh, and Cool Water are uh, has a clone, uh, which is called uh, Green Irish Tweed. Um, so they these three they have the same age. So you've got Grefanel and then Fahrenheit. Uh, cool water and green Irish tweed. 
and then Orista II is the son of Fahrenheit, so the grandson of Orista oh, of uh, of uh, uh, They are all coming from the same structure. Uh, of course, we've got plenty of different things inside um, because of regulation, because of uh, modernity, because uh, of a way of extracting ingredients. But they're all coming from the same family. And 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 Orista too, it's a it's a very smooth scent that is both comfortable but fresh. So usually when you say when you think about fresh, you think about citrus. Uh, but this one is not acid at all. It's something very cozy, very warm, but fresh. So what is cozy inside is the mainly like the musky uh, violet. Uh, what you got a bit powdery is the the iris, the iris roots, and what you have fresh is kind of cucumber thinning kind of green. It's interesting you say that because you could actually describe this scent almost as like a a softer Fahrenheit with an iris note. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Did absolutely. you? And I, th I think it's very interesting what, what I'm saying since uh, 40 minutes is clearly that to say, okay, uh, with Parlemois, we want something 100% honest and transparent. Um, and it, it, it's impossible to say, okay, with Parlemois Parfum, we've launched uh, 14 and soon 15 perfumes that you've never smelled in your life that are totally different from everything else. I mean, it's not possible. The industry exist since decades and decades and almost centuries. Uh, you've had brilliant perfumer since the beginning. I mean, it's like in in, in the cooking uh, industry, how do you want to reinvent everything from one day to another one? Uh, did, you, did you have to make a conscious effort to gain all of this perfume knowledge? You know, there you are talking about gray flannel and Fahrenheit and green Irish tweed um, and, um, uh, cool water. Did did you just grow up learning about this stuff? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, Michel just uh, drops me a story every month or every week, something okay. interesting. So he says, "Oh, I remember this story and this story." He 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 he's trying to give me all the the keys to understand how does it work really, uh, how the industry works really, and and that's. That just uh, brings me even more uh, energy and desire to keep on uh, promoting my concept, to be honest, because every story he tells me uh, comforts me in thinking that, okay, everything is about marketing and storytelling. Uh, everything is about this. So clearly, it just pushed me even more to say, okay, so I will be even more transparent than the day previously, the previous day. It's a good time to bring in this question from Ashfaq. He says, since you mentioned that you studied the perfume industry, I was wondering, does the story of a perfume come before the perfume or is it the other way around? Uh, it's the other way around. Uh, Michel doesn't create by walking uh, through a forest and seeing a little bird uh, hitting uh, a leaf and then he thinks, oh, maybe this will give me an idea uh, or my travel to the deepest uh, the deepest areas in India will give me an idea. No, uh, he is creating like only in his mind, and he's creating like very how to say, not chemically, but a very uh, in a mathematic way. He thinks, okay, if I put this and this and this, maybe it will make a good thing. Okay, We've so he creates, and then we we find a dress for this perfume. Cool. We've got a question from Kenzo twenty five. What are some other modern niche? niche brands that you think are very creative and pushing the boundaries nowadays? I don't want to 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 get more enemies. Um, <laughs> can, can you put it in the, the question? Sorry, Darius. Here it is. What, what, are some of the, what are some other modern niche brands? Basically, some modern uh, other niche brands that you, you know, you think are doing a good job. I didn't realize you had so many enemies, but never mind. We'll... <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I hope we don't have any enemies, but how to say, uh, I, honestly, I, I cannot I cannot answer. I can tell you the brand uh, I like, um, but my taste will be more about the global brand, not just about the juices. It's more about the concept. I really love concept, and I really love like uh, uh, personality and philosophy of a brand. So, of course, I, I, I clearly like Le Labo. I think it's brilliant what they've done with their boutique. I mean, you enter inside this when it was the beginning of Le Labo, you were like, okay, it's brilliant. You've never saw this before. Um, I also like Bayredo for the success they are having and the 
the capacity of this man, Ben Gorham, to bring the intention on him. I'm feeling like when you are wearing a Byredo, you are wearing a part of Ben Gorham on you. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a new term for, so it's brilliant. Um, maybe there is a, the, the young, the young brand that I especially like and that I that I could be especially jealous of would be DS and Durga, uh, because I think it's it's very creative uh, and it's very uh, out of the path. Uh, I mean, they are not following like everybody, and I like because they are not using the same speech as every time. Okay, these are the best ingredients in the world, the finest ingredients in the world, the most expensive formula in the world. No, they are, I think, really very trendy, very true uh, about what, are they, what they are doing. Maybe I'm false, but that's something I really like. And as far as I'm aware, they also, I think, use uh, Robote, I believe, for some of their... <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so that's I, I, think uh... they do. I think they do. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll take a few more questions, but I should also say, Benjamin, you should, you should tell people where is the best place for them to try your perfumes? Are you doing a discovery set at the moment which has all of the perfumes? What are some of the... your you know, obviously, I guess they can go to your site, but which countries do you not ship to at the moment? Or absolutely. So uh, the discovery set is so far is out of stock, but we still uh, we still propose like a solution where you can uh, choose like uh, six samples of your choice on our website. Uh, and if you and if you choose uh, two times, two different times, six samples, uh, then uh, we offer you the two extra samples to go up to fourteen. Uh, so the website is great. After that, uh, we are open in Paris. Uh, after that, you've got when you're like in the US or in the Americas, you can go uh, to Lucky Scent. Um, mm -hmm. When you are in Russia, you can go to the stores called uh, Molecule. Uh, they are great uh, stores where you, where you got great knowledge and they carry uh, our collection. When you are in the Middle East, we are only present in Saudi Arabia and it's absolutely the same answer for stores called uh, Lodore. Uh, they've got great knowledge and great selection. And of course, they've got my perfumes. Uh, and in Japan, uh, you can go to my uh, beloved place called Isetan. Uh, and of course the website. Um, question here from Eric Brandon. Is there any chance of a book? So I suppose this means either you or your father writing a book because Eric would love to hear some of his, his stories. Mm, maybe we'll do it, but uh, once the brand will be more established uh, because maybe it's a bit too early to tell uh, the, the interesting and the funny stories we have. Uh, you're you're getting more enemies is what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no more enemies, but I prefer to first focus on 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 Parma uh, and then maybe write a book. But I'm very bad in writing. Uh, maybe I'm very bad in writing. Uh, but I'm sure Michel would love to write a book at the end and and to 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 tell everything he has to tell because he started first. I remember a book where he started first to say uh, to say something, uh, and recently um, he, he said inside a book that uh, the big concern. He had he had about Fahrenheit uh, was tricky in his career because first uh, the brand the company was working for uh, didn't want to say Michel created Fahrenheit uh, because at that time in this company he had uh, a perfumer a, how to say upon him um, I mean a, a senior perfumer um, and the company wanted to say no no this perfume has been created by this senior perfumer but actually no it's Michel who created it so. You got something to say, yeah. Okay. And a question from David. What are the challenges that you are facing as a new brand or a relatively new brand? Uh, it's to get... Uh, the, I think the biggest challenge is to be uh, visible. Uh, the competition is very rude right now. Uh, you've got everything. You've got the designer's brand and even inside what we still call a niche, You've got brands that are owned by designers brand or big groups. So we've discussed about uh, Estee Lauder brand. How do you want to compete inside the niche with companies such as Estee Lauder? I mean, money is not even more a question. I mean, money is something that never ends. So for customers that are not very um, aware of the industry, they think uh Frederick Mann is a new brand or Lolabo is a new brand and you say yeah they are quite young but it's still something owned by a, a giant a monster so it's one of the biggest challenge is to compete with this thing okay and the last question from me 
I guess uh, for you, same as with pretty much any other brand, everything has been delayed in terms of releases and production. So when do you think we will see the next perfume from you? So the next perfume uh, will be launched very soon. Uh, it's a perfume that is called the Haute Provence. So Haute Provence, you can understand like the the high fields in terms of altitude uh, of Provence. So the south, the region in the south uh, east uh, of France. Uh, Haute Provence, it's a lavender. It's a fruity and fresh lavender. Um, it will be available, I think, in June uh, in my uh, stores and online. Uh, it will be for its launch exclusive, I think, to Liberty, uh, where we'll be entering in maybe August or September. Uh, and it will be available worldwide, I would say, uh, in July. So one month before in our stores and then in July uh, worldwide. Okay, perfect. As soon as you said the name, I just thought to myself, that's got to be a lavender perfume. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a lavender <laughs> one. Okay, thank you so much, Benjamin, for your time. Uh, just, just to remind everybody, you know, Benjamin did not know any of the questions uh, that that were coming his way. So, thank you for being such a good sport and and you know, giving us uh, your time um, at the end of a long day at work. Thank you all of you for tuning in with your questions. Uh, check out Persolays.com for details of another interview that is coming your way. Actually, in less than twenty four hours. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please consider supporting my work on coffee if you can. And please keep the questions and comments coming. Let's keep the discussion going about uh, the brand. We've got a few uh, We've got a few comments coming now. Just very quickly, I'll show you, Benjamin. DB70, who's based in London, says, I very much enjoy the chat. Thanks to you both. David says, thank you very much. Kenzo says, thank you. Uh, somebody here is saying merci. So lots and lots of people sending lots and lots of thank yous to everybody, to all of you. Um, so yes, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to you, Benjamin. Stay safe and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Now. Thanks a lot, Darius. Thanks a lot. Bye.